Okay. I checked the comments, and apparently the thing that I'm missing is sign. What are you looking at so intently? Hmm. This board seems fishy. The board for Holy Land of God? Must be because it's near the river. Not that kind of fishy. Just come and take a closer look. Interesting. It's very faded, but I can make out some words in the background. As if it was a race, or overwritten. The sign was made over an already existing board. It was probably overwritten on it when the priest painted over it. If only we knew someone who could make the words out. Hmm. I think I know a guy. I don't know. Ask someone else. An angel statue. I don't do fancy chemicals. Ask someone else. It's clearly the doctor, but I need to talk to everyone else, I think. If you ever found a clue, I should look up to the sky and get my pig seeing binoculars out. How the hell would I know? That board existed before I moved in. I don't know what you're planning on doing to the Lord's signboard, but you better not do anything blasphemous to it. I think we do have someone who is an expert in dealing with such oddities. I think the doctor would like to know more about this if you haven't access to him already. Well, that's just spelling it out for me. I'm pretty sure this is not in my job description. You're a psychiatrist who is also a certified mortician. Your job never made sense in the first place. Come on, Doc. You can do this. Just think of the board as a patient with amnesia. Fine. Hmm. I can make the words appear, but I can't remember which chemical to use. Well, I think the only... I don't know if any of these are actually things. But that one has the word visible in it, so I'm guessing that's what it's supposed to be. Depressicide? Hydrophobic acid? What? Dry oxide? Doze off? Hate oxide. Visible it is, I guess. I think it's carbon visibless, considering it has visible in its name. Oh my, you're right. How silly of me. Those are some disturbing chemical names by the name. Or by the way. Alright, give it a second. There. You can read it now. It just says the word carnival. Where's the rest of it? What did you expect? That's the best I could do with the stuff I have. There's a bunch of numbers written below it, but only the first four digits are visible. Four, three, two, one. That's easy to remember. It's the current president's luggage combination. What a letdown. Someone might know the meaning behind this, but I can't figure it out. I think someone here might know about it. I'll just have to bring it up with him. I don't know what you're... Okay, guess not. Well, there's like three people who are him around here. One of them's the uh, doctor. One of them's Polly. Hi, I had a land related question. To be honest, you're better off asking the land development department, but I will try to answer to, to my best knowledge. I saw an abandoned property with a sign that was worn out to the point where many of its words had cor had corroded away. The only words I could make out was her clinic, and a number whose first four digits are 4321. Well, then the board probably didn't say clinic, since properties starting with those four digits are used for outdoor businesses. Outdoor businesses? Yes, you know, like parks, pools, or exercise field. Except they're privately owned. Wait, are you saying that land is... was a proper, private property that did business in open areas? Yep, without the rest of the numbers, I doubt you could find the owner easily. <sighs> I really don't want to go through all that paperwork in the land development office. I think that was everything I can get out of this place. I have to crack this case wide open.
All right, step one, read all the things. Codename Santa. Supposedly died by falling from a great height, his identity is still not known, as all his pockets were emptied out. Priest of the local church, Fatherson is an orthodox religious person who built the church with his own two hands five years ago. May God guide you in your journey and help you overcome your trials. Margaret is an ex-gangster who fell in love with the priest and changed her whole lifestyle to be with him. Have you ever been shanked in the liver? The person overlooking the construction of the fort. He's an angry old man and is always complaining about things. How bad it is so bad. My blood pressure is higher than that. The person supervising the workers and working on the construction of the fort. He's an old yet rugged man. Righty tidy, lefty Lucy. Able to survive on hate and alcohol. Dreg is an emotionless zombie where coming in contact with him will make you a zombie too. My favorite hobby is depression. Tira Lawford is one of Dreg's childhood friends who first met him when she was still in the orphanage. What rhymes with love on first sight? Kidnapping. An anomalous existence. Amber came from a new breed of angels who are capable of bringing back the dead. Nobody told me adulthood is hard. It's a trap. Polly is a childhood friend of Dreg, who we first met in school and immediately acquired a dislike for each other. I am a big fat dummy. Damn it, Dreg, stop tampering with my lines. Dr. Sai is the psychiatrist, doctor, and forensics of the Rydaeth release. He offers a discount when you use all three services, which happens too often. To tell you the truth, I sometimes pretend to know what I'm doing. An identified male in his late 60s was found dead in front of the church. Preliminary check up revealed that he died by falling from a great height. Sister Margaret claims that she met the victim once when she came to the church, when the priest was not present and wished for atonement a month ago. Dr. Sai found traces of ink on the victim's body, and Polly theorizes that they may be prison tattoos. All witnesses claimed that they were inside their own residences when the incident happened since it was a cold night. The fire pit near the captain's tent is still warm, meaning that someone was sitting outside his tent at night. The captain did camp outside, but due to his stomach problems, he was repeatedly going to and fro from the location. There's a construction of a fort going on for the last two months to guard the border between Rydia and Balboa better. Foreman Vice has been constructing the fort with ta while taking care not to disturb the natural scenery of the land. The priest claims that the army will cause landslides if they continue to make deep holes for the foundation and move trees so many times. Testing revealed the word carnival alongside four digits of a number 4321. The sign said Holy Land of God, but Tira claims it was written over something else. According to form and vice, the numbers represent the idea of the land and is used to signify private properties, which does business in outdoor activities. Many tombstones are laid around the area, but there aren't any actual graves in it. There also seems to be metal scraps and playground equipment surrounding it. The priest claims that the tombstones existed alongside the metal scraps before he created the church. Sister claims that the metal scraps are old playground equipment dumped here, and the bigger ones may be rides. That would have been a much smaller leap of logic if I had found that the sign was a clue beforehand. No matter how hard I try, I can't think of a single way that can explain how did this murder happen. So, either there is a perfectly sensible explanation for all this, or it really was an act of God. This is one of those cases where it brings my entire existence into question whether it was worthless or not. Isn't your life already worthless? Yes, but somehow unable to solve this case makes me feel more worthless than ever. So I guess you don't know exactly what happened here either. I have a couple of guesses, but nothing solid. I guess we can't solve this today. Wow, it is surprising to see you stumped like this. What did you expect? We don't know who the victim is. We don't know how he was killed. We don't even have a motive for murder. And it definitely was not an accident. This feels too elaborate for that. Maybe it really was God who killed him. 
God. That reminds me, I was supposed to help the priest with the land ownership issue. Why don't you guys wrap this up while I... Wait, where's the crybaby? You noticed that just now. She said something about leaving to follow a shimmering light, then she left. Seriously? And you let her? Or she got lost? Or she was kidnapped? I thought you would be more angry about the fact that she is ditching work. Angry? I'm proud. She's finally learning from me. I call that progress. <sighs> Never mind. We'll take care of the rest. You go and settle their dispute. Fine. And done. That's how you clear a crime scene. There are a couple of spots left, though. I mean, pretty sure I can see that pool of blood from outer space. Not my problem. I'm pretty sure it is. How many free sessions coupons would it take for you to keep quiet about this? I don't need any, and I want you to tell Dreg during his sessions that Polly doesn't exist, and he's just a figment of his imagination. Done. Ha! That'll teach him to interfere with my love life. Friendly advice, my butt! Well, before that, let's see if they're able to solve this mess. You blasphemous puppets of the government! I established this church five years ago and I made sure to check the records. Good point. Well, you didn't check hard enough. I have the official papers of the land right here. A very good point. Stop saying good point already! Don't you have anything better to add to the conversation? You make an excellent point, Polly. God damn it! Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Do you wish to go to the most horrible place in the universe? I know, right? Damn post office. But what now? Didn't you guys apply for the land when you established your church? It is pretty common among religious communities. We did last year when we stayed here for four years, but so far the only response we got was that it was pending. Well, that ain't right. We started the plans to build the fort six months ago and we didn't run into anything like that. To be fair, the land development office is filled with lazy people who have the brains of a fish. Oh man, I really don't want to go through those mountains of files to correct this. Isn't there another way? I think there might be a different problem altogether. Like what? Like, we don't know much about this piece of land as much as we should. What do you mean by that? I think this property already belongs to someone else and we are all just trespassers. What? Somebody else? How can you say that? There are a lot of things pointing to that theory, and I would like to expand on that. But I have the official papers! I've met the land development people, and trust me, those documents are as useless as a sweater on the beach. Frankly, I feel the same. Borderlands such as this one are always debatable for ownership, and we might need to check it out. If that's true, then you might actually will need to check the Bo Balboan records too. Wait, first of all, what makes you think this holy land belongs to a human? A lot of things, actually. Let's start with something simple. The sign. Fatherson, you put up a sign recently which said, Holy Land of God. Yes, so what? I noticed you used an old board you found lying around. Is that correct? Yes, after clearing the overgrown trees and clearing the land, I found it tucked in some stones. Well, the thing is... Something was written on that board which had faded away after years of exposure. What? Ah, oh, yes, I used chemicals to make the residue resurface again. There's something written on the board that might have set you. It was... Ah, I forgot, was it carnival or circus? I mentioned a carnival. It also had some numbers which I am assuming is its allocated land number. What? But, but then why did no one come forward all these years? So that was a clinic you were talking about. What were the numbers again? It was a long one and many numbers are still not clear, but it definitely started with 4321. Those are right in numbers, alright. Used mainly for businesses and not for military. Wait, what? Are you telling me this land is really someone else's private property? Hold on, that's even more confusing. I sent out a notice to claim anyone who owned this property to come forth. And except for some obvious scammers, no one came forth. Which brings me to my second point. Why is no one claiming this land? Maybe because something happened here. What do you mean? 
Fatherson, didn't those things strike you as odd when you saw them? Three graves? I did, and I also checked some of them. Uh, no graves, just tombstones put on some random places. They're not random. What? Most of the tombstones are around metal scraps, which resemble playground equipment. Huh. Yes, I noticed. And you didn't think of investigating that? We did, but no one knew what happened here. This place is very far from society, and the people around here are always on the move. So the most we can do is pray for the souls to pass on. <sighs> we have to find out what happened here, and on top of that, find out who is Santa and who killed him, and why. I can answer that. Hey, I'm back. What? Did you say? I said, I know who the victim is, and who killed him, and why. But how could you possibly... I had help from a new friend I made. And I'm here right now to fulfill the promise I made to him. No matter what. Ah, now to do her section of the story. That light went here. <laughs> what was that? What if it's coming from a dark abandoned house? Relax, you got the golden angels to support you. Besides, this ghost feels more like a lost soul than a cursed one. Eh? Lost soul? Basically, it can't move on because it has something left to do. That's horrible. What can I do to help? But well, look at you. Your fear had left you as soon as you realized someone needs your help. It's a child, right? Of course we have to help. Just keep following it, and make sure to check out the places it stops. Not to tell us about what it wants. Uh, okay, but it's going to be easier said than done in this darkness. Right side of the bookshelf. The left side of the bookshelf. Fireplace. A filing cabinet. Clothes cupboard. A landscape painting. Ignore that for now. It's a piano. It's a framed poster of some sort. A table with drawers. Papa, hurry up! The carnival will open soon. Eh? Carnival? Do you get the tickets? Tickets? Hey, wait, where'd he go? I can sense he's still in this room somewhere. Perhaps looking for those tickets he mentioned might help. How do we know they're still here? They must be, otherwise the soul wouldn't have bothered breaking you here. There aren't many shelves here. It should be fast. But fine. Table with drawers. Frame poster. Covered with drawers. Hmm? Oh! I think I found the tickets! So, what are those tickets for? It says, Uncle Escador's Fun Time Carnival. Human Marketing. Wait, this address is... <laughs> He's back! Alright, you know the drill. Let's get to work. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, there you are. Papa! Can you hear the music? We're almost there. Oh god, my ears. I see it. I can see the carnival from up here. Carnival from up here. He said something about seeing the carnival from a higher place. Is there something related to that here? Hmm. Perhaps we should be looking for a picture or something. Well, there's only two of those. A landscape painting. Of course. The view from up here was referring to this. So what's so special about this painting? Is... I think it's a painting of the carnival he mentioned. So how does that help? I knew it! The address on the tickets and this landscape. This is the same place where we found the body today. Wait, that place looks like a dump. So how old is this picture? I have no idea. He's here again. This kid might be older than we originally thought. Yeah. The 
that adds five years at least. What? I told you. I'll clean my gear, my room after we come back. Eh? Room? I haven't seen any doors here yet. Though. Wait, where's this room you mentioned? I sent him. He's somewhere above us. I think there may be secret passages around here. Look for it. Left side of the bookshelf. Right side of the bookshelf. Fireplace. Clothes cupboard. Piano. Table. Hmm. I can feel a cold wind coming from behind this cupboard. Perhaps if I... Hey! There's a doorway here! Question is, why was it hidden? I guess we're about to find out. Oh, he's here. Seems like he wants to talk. I should talk with the ghost first. Hello, lady. What you doing in my room? Hi, little boy. My name is Amber Hart. I came here looking for you. That's creepy. You're weird. Eh? Well, you did stalk a small room, a small boy up to his room. Anyone would think the same. Hey, lady. What's your name? I'm Amber Hart, a police officer. Could you tell me your name? Papa told me never to give you my name out to strangers, so forget it. You keep mentioning your father. Where is he? I don't know. I I can't remember. The last time I saw him was here. He stopped coming here a long time ago and sealed the entrance. I don't know where he is. Well then, how about we look together? He must have left some clues behind us to where he's gone. Uh, okay. Search this room only. There must be a clue here since he brought us to this room. A shattered liquor bottle. Papa started drinking those things a lot after we went to the carnival. That's natural, I guess. Can't blame him for going into despair. Yeah. A flower pot. The flowers have dried a long time ago, though. Hmm? That's weird. I don't remember there being a flower pot in my room. He's probably kept here by his loved ones. These flowers. I saw them growing near the trees in the place where he found the body. These are... work orders? Papa gets those a lot when he's working. That means his father probably owns a business. You should remember it. Oh? Is this a painting of you and your father? Yep, but I don't like the way my nose turned out in it. Your father is a handsome man with brownish blonde hair. I wonder how he looks now. Depends on how much time has passed. Probably wearing a red coat. What are these? Invoices? Papa spent hours studying those papers. He must be taking an exam. These numbers. There are a lot of cutbacks being made. Mine was even taken out of maintenance's budget. Looks like the businesses weren't doing so well. Another landscape painting of the carnival. Did you see the giant ferris wheel? Papa said I was old enough to ride it this year. That ferris wheel. I think that was the reason. Yeah, looks like someone didn't take care of equipment as they should have. A letter. Papa flew into a rage when he read it. Respected parent slash guardian, this letter was sent to inform you that... Mr. Dane Escador has been found guilty of negligence in maintaining equipment and has been sentenced to 30 years in prison. 30 years is a long time in human life, right? So if he got angry over this, he must have expected a death sentence. This date. The 30 years imprisonment ended about a month ago. I see. At least now we know why no one remembers about that place. And there's the motive and the victim. These clothes are covered in mud. Ah, those are Papa's clothes. He goes through them a lot since he gets them dirty all the time. What, does his father work in a coal mine or something? What a cute teddy bear. Papa won that for me in the carnival. Wait, that's... What's wrong? There are blood stains on it. If you don't want to continue, we can... No. I can't live with myself and I've turned a ply eye to it. I want to save him. Don't worry, I'm right here, aren't I? Yeah. I 
think I know what happened here now. So, what now? I'll fulfill your last wish. Really? Can you really do it? I'll try. So please, go and rest now. Rest? I really don't know how to do that. That's okay. I'll guide you. Oh, cool. There are two of you now. That's my big sister. She can be a meanie sometimes, but she's a good person. Since I'll be taking this kid, you know what you have to do. You'll need to do it alone, right? Amber Hart never breaks promises. Especially the ones on dieting. Or, except the ones on dieting. So I'll definitely do it. Good. Well, it was nice meeting you, lady. Thanks for everything. That's what friends do. Friends? Oh, that's right. I never told you my name. My name is Abel. Abel v What? You know who the killer is? When? How? Well, that's a first. The seniors are dumbfounded while the junior has the answers. Officer Dreg, if you'll allow me... Go ahead. Save me the trouble. Thank you. The reason this case was deemed unsolvable was because we didn't know the who, the why, and the how. Right. We don't know who the victim is. Or why he was killed. And most importantly, we don't know how he was killed. Right, so let's start with the who. As in, who was the victim? The victim's name was... Ah, crud. I've already forgotten who it was. And all it said was uncle. On the ticket, so I would have to remember what the letter actually said. I think it was Shane? Crud. Dane? The victim's name was Dane Escador. He was the owner of a carnival. Uncle Escador's Funtime Carnival. Carnival, just like the sign we found. Never heard of it. That's because the carnival was shut down and the owner was sent to prison for 30 years. I'm sure you can find his record if you look up his name. So the prison tattoos were real. I'll be sure to look it up when I get back. But then why was he here? Because this is where... The carnival is always held. I see. An outdoor business. That would also explain all the playground equipment and broken rides we see lying around. And the reason he came back here after being tech released last month was because technically, this land is his property. Pardon me, but that's impossible. When I was building the church, I looked for the ownership of the land, but found none. That's because the land was seized for the ongoing investigation at that time. It seems the officials forgot to release the land after the case was over, and since no one was around to notice it, the land remained as government property, which is why the army thought they could use it. Ugh, <sighs> what a mess. I guess we should take a look at those records. Damn government, wasting everyone's time like this. So now we know the who, we should look into the why, right? And I'm guessing the why lies in the story behind the reason he went to prison. Yes. Thirty years ago, the carnival had an incident with its ferris wheel. The ferris wheel broke down and fell, causing several injuries and death. Many among them were children. How horrible! Those poor souls. May they find peace in the embrace of God. Why is this my first time hearing about it? Probably because it happened thirty years ago, and I guess people simply forgot about it. Seriously? It happens. I mean, look at the right here, Balboa War. People are already treating it like a distant memory. Yeah. The reason the Ferris wheel broke down was poor maintenance. Caused by budget cuts was the reason the ride broke and the incident happened. The owner was found guilty for negligence and sentenced to 30 years in prison. What? He got, e he got off easy. He should have received capital punishment. Maybe that's it. What? Maybe that's what our killer thought too. The killer also thought that the owner got off lightly and wanted justice. Yes, that's exactly what happened. And with that, now we have a motive. So you know the identity of the killer? More or less. I know someone with a motive. I don't have any proof of it, though. I'll take responsibility for any false accusations, so go on ahead. Wow, it's weird having you take responsibility for something. I think it's the only actual supervision you've done until this point. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Right. 
The tombstones that are put here, each one represents a child dying that day on those spots. I see. How tragic. But the one I want to talk about is the one behind me, where we found the body. It belongs to a child whose parents is with us here today. This person was so traumatized by their child's death, it sent them to a downward spiral. Isn't that right? Hmm. Isn't that right, Foreman Vice? Plus, is this true? Uh, I... 30 years ago, you lost your only son in the carnival incident. His name was Abel. He was 9 years old, and it was his first time to ride the Ferris wheel. How... how do you know all that? You couldn't live with the fact knowing that the man responsible was still alive, so you have to plan. You knew when he was getting out and made arrangements for the army to build a fort here so you could be present when he comes. But thus... And about a month ago, you saw him wandering around here, and you got your chance. Thirty years of waiting, and you finally succeeded in killing him last night. Where's your proof? Eh? eh? Abel was your son. Isn't that enough? I'm not rejecting that. It does certainly give me motive, but there's no proof that I killed him. Please stop this. You're only hurting the memory of your child by doing all this. Let his memory rest. Shut up. My child died a long time ago, and I made peace with that. No, you didn't. It was an accident. And Escador paid for his crimes. He deserved a second chance. Are you defending the bastard who murdered children? What kind of horrible person are you? Please, Abel is stuck. You can't move on because you can't move on. Let it go. My son is dead. Now get out of my face. I have nothing more to say to you. I... I... Alright, that's enough. Amber, come over here. Hi. Just because a person has a tragic past, that doesn't automatically turn them into a good guy. Eh? A human is a miserable creature. It will always try to justify its actions, no matter how horrible or one-sided they may be. I admire that you tried persuasion with kindness, but there are some assholes who are blind to that kind of thing. You did good bringing us to this point. You can leave the hard-ass stuff to us now. I I'm sorry. I just want able to... It's okay. Sister Margaret, can you... Of course. Amber, dear. Let's rest inside for now. Uh, okay. Finally. What kind of crop crap breaks down and cries? What a crybaby. Yeah, that's true. Hey, at least you got me, right? What's the difference? You still don't have any proof. The difference is that I'm not going to be as kind in my interrogation. And soon, I'm going to make you regret the same. Is that a threat? You bared your fangs at the pup who just wanted to help you. Now the pack will make sure to devour your home. And don't think about running. I'm keeping an eye on you. I got nothing special to add, except that I'll beat you to a pulp for making her cry after you confess. Now what makes you think I will? Because if even half of what she says is true, then you are a balloon waiting to pop. I just have to keep pumping you up. Let's talk about how Santa, or Escador, died. He fell, right? Just like your son did all those years ago. That's a little harsh way to put it. You wanted a real cop to handle this, right? So I'm handling it. So answer the question. Is that a coincidence? Besides, how the hell did I take him up into the sky and drop him without anyone noticing? Mainly, because you knew the schedule of Captain Graham. You knew when Graham would leave his spot, and when he would come back, so you timed your plan accordingly. Hold on, now that I think about it, didn't you give me the muffin which gave me the runs last night, Vice? Another fabricated story. You're very adamant on making me out to be the killer. No, now that I know the facts, I'm pretty sure that you are the only one who is capable of this murder. What? I'll admit you had me stumped. I couldn't wrap my head around how he had died. With no direction, I was searching blindly. But the kid came through, and now I realized one important point about this murder. And what's that? What mattered was the height at which the victim had to fall. It doesn't necessarily mean it had to be sky high. The same effect can be, a cr can be achieved by pushing the victim from ground level. 
into a hole. Uh, I, the priest is complaining about the holes you made to support this, to, to make the support structure were too big. So I thought, what well, if they were purposely making a hole larger than the rest, the sole purpose of killing someone? I don't know what you're talking about. Captain Graham, are there any holes that were covered up before the body was discovered? Eh? Yeah. The men who just finished installing the support beam this morning before the body was found. Help them to dig it up again before it dries. I bet we'll find traces of blood at the bottom. Even if you find them, so what? Anyone could have pushed that maggot down below. Maybe so, but don't forget, the body was not found in the hole. It was found on the top of that mound. So, so what are you saying? I'm saying that only you could have moved the body the way it was found. Eh? How? Simple. You used the same thing you used for the trees. You have special equipment you use to move the trees along with the ground alongside them. Ah, it can definitely lift the surrounding ground with the tree. But doesn't it need like four people to operate it? Ah, uh, you see. Vice was considerate enough to tell me earlier that he is perfectly capable of using it alone. That's... Dr. Sai, I'm pretty sure that if you check that equipment, you may find blood traces on it. No, you won't. It's cleaned with water every morning. No worries. Water doesn't wash away blood completely. With the help of some chemicals, I can make them visible again. What? Uh, uh. Well, now, Foreman Vice, we have the motive, the evidence, and your sour face. Anything more to add? Why? Why are you going so far for that maggot? Because it's the law. We have the duty to treat every person the same, otherwise how can we uphold it? Even if the person is a child murderer? Just like the kid said, Escador paid for his crimes. Well, it wasn't enough for me. He should have been given the death sentence. Maybe so, but your child was not the only one to die that day. It wasn't solely your decision. The last is right. I haven't gotten over my son's death. It's been 30 years, but still. Yeah, she feels that everyone can be saved, even a killer like you. They're not going to be lenient with my punishment, are they? As far as the law is concerned, you killed an innocent person with an extended, premeditated plan. If we let you off because of your past, it may be used in future cases for reference, and true killers will take advantage of that. I see. Can you tell that girl something for me? Sure. Tell her thank you, but it is too late for me. Guards, take this man into custody. Yes, sir. Abel, I'm sorry for troubling you, but don't worry. Papa will be home soon. How are you feeling? Incredibly hungry. Oh good, she's back to normal. What passes for normal around here anyway? I guess I should head back to the office and report the error. Since Mr. Ecuador doesn't seem to have any relatives, I should be able to give the church the rights to the land. But I was also hoping you would let us use a part of the land for the fort. Thank you. I will think about it. Father? Eh? Uh, hi. Sure. As long as you maintain proper conduct. Thank you. Good, because I really didn't want to go home with a case pending. Well then, if it's all the same to you, I will take my leave. Many patients to help. As long as you understand the meaning of the word, help. I suppose I should hold back as well. I still haven't gotten complete control of my insides yet. Too much information. We should get going too. It's going to be a lot of paperwork for this case. Right. What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? Nothing. Just something Dr. Sai said to me. Weirdo. Father, we still need to prepare for the masses. Oh, right. After you. Oh, and Officer Dreg, I wouldn't mind if you came by the church again. We can probably help you. However, I meet you halfway at the bar. Sounds good to me. Hey, can I come too? Do so, and I will gut you like a pig. What? What? Nothing, just talking to myself. 
Anyways, we must hurry. R right. I see. So she likes him. Women in love can be scary. Women are scary in general. Don't turn out like her, okay? Eh? Uh, okay. Hey, wait up. Do you have a brother or something? You are okay, right? Yeah, just lost control of my emotions for a second there. I guess the nickname Crybaby suits me, right? Not in this case, no. Eh? The reason I call you Crybaby is because you break down at the littlest inconvenience. That's good to know, I think. But today, you cried for someone else. You wish to save someone who is doomed from the start. I, I had my reasons. Just remember, we have lives too. I mean, not me particularly. But what I am saying is we all have our own baggages as well. So feel free to save as many people as you want. But remember not to let it affect you. Not let it change you. What about others? If there's one lesson life has taught me, it's that she likes to give lemons. Eh? You can choose to eat it, make lemonade, throw it at someone else. Your choice. The point is, if you keep worrying about other people's lemons, yours will get spoiled by the time you realize it. Am I making sense? Because it sounded a lot better in my head. No, I get it. Thanks. Alright, let's go. We still have work to do. Right. By the way, what about the pie you promised? Fine, we'll stop at the bar. I need to get a drink anyway. No way, that place smells bad and their pies aren't very big. It's either that or no pie. <sighs> In that case, can I get a lemon pie? Sure. Next episode, Medieval Chronicles 5, The Paradox.